Okay, hi everyone, I'm Jane. Um, a few people have asked me about the colouring in this image and a previous image that I did. So uh, this is my attempt at putting together a tutorial. Um, first off, I'd like to point out that the original image comes from the Castica Ascente archive in the Commons on Flickr. And I did contact them directly to make sure I could use the image this way and edit the image in this way and they're fine with that. Um, I'll apologise in advance, it's a little bit windy here tonight, so if there's a few doors banging in the background, etc., um, I do apologise. Um, okay, so onto the, the main image. This is uh, the, the final image with everything coloured and added in, and this is the original image from the archive. So first of all, I started building what I wanted to do with the girl. Um, so there was some basic editing, so that was basically editing areas like around her foot um, and around her hair, general restoration that you do in any sort of photo just to clean it up. And the same, there's still a little bit on her brow here as well. I just had a little bit of a tweak there. Um, so then I wanted to work with the plaits, with her plaits. So um, I copied the two existing plaits and um, masked them out and cut them out exactly. Um, and then I used Puppet Warp to bend them into the shape that I want. Then I wanted to start working on the dress and building the dress. To do that, I would need um, a, a copy of part of the fabric. So I duplicated a piece from the skirt and pulled it into another um, document and adjusted things like curves and did a little bit of um, clone stamping to try and even it out a little bit to create a standard pattern um, using edit define pattern and then I defined a pattern with that. Um, once I had that I created a, a swatch essentially in um, in the original file and I'll just pull this up so we can see it properly. So that's the main swatch there and I duplicated that a few different times for different areas and then just masked it and did a little bit of warping to get it to, to fit neatly. Um, so firstly with the skirt, um, so I couldn't really warp the existing skirt very much nor could I warp these pieces very much because it distorted the pattern very quickly. So most of this had to be done largely with masking and, and just a little bit of liquify to just push in the edges a little bit where it curves. Um, so the, the left hand skirt piece and then there's a couple of curves layers there to create shadows and to blend the, the main colour mode in and the same with the other pieces on the right I'm just placing where there would be natural shadows as well and all of this I needed to be masked out for the the main skirt there and, and part of the blending here was I, I let one of the original flowers kind of blend over to help it all blend a little bit better there as well um, then I need to move on to the upper part which I was looking at this and thinking, oh my god, where do I start? Um, so I started with the sleeves. I figured some of these smaller areas here would be a little bit of an easier thing to tackle to start with. Um, so I added in a little bit of cloning on this one. And uh, and this one here, I think uh, from memory, yeah, I think I pulled that from a piece of the pattern. And then curves adjustment layers on these just to create little wrinkles and things like that. And then it was onto the bodice because I couldn't avoid it anymore. Um, so there were a few different pieces here and needed to create left and right pieces because I wanted to keep the buttons in so I needed to, um, to keep that section. So the bodice piece on the left um, then has a couple of different adjustment layers to um, blend it in and to, to make it fit more comfortably and there was a little bit of warping around the edges there just to make it look like it's bending over her shoulder and that was just with your standard transform warp and, uh, and the same on the other side as well. 
um, just making sure that you try and lighten it. And, and with the curves adjustment layers, most of them you'll notice have got masks on them where I've just painted in with a, a soft brush on low flow, usually about 20% flow, until it's looking the way I want. Then there's a layer of dodge and burn. Um, this layer is pretty much the same sort of thing you do on any dodge and burn with any image, just sort of defining your highlights and your shadows. So just giving you an idea of what those masks kind of look like. And then there's a couple of curves layers here that um, would darken it very much, but that, that works in the final image where we've got night in the image. But for the time being, I'll, I'll leave them off so that you can see the colour process a little bit better. Um, so with our colour layer, I started off with the skin. Um, so created a selection for the skin of the areas that I wanted to affect. And um, then added in a couple of different skin colour layers. This is colour fill layers. So these are colour adjustment layers from places like this. And then you you grab the colour that you want. Um, I, for this particular image, I did actually download a set of swatches from DeviantArt of skin colours, but the previous one that I did, I actually just created my own based on what I thought looked right. And then there's, uh, and you'll notice most of the time I've got two layers for each of the colours. One is set to colour in the blend mode, and the other is set to soft light. And if you have a look, the soft light helps bring up the shadows um, because real shadows on skin aren't black, they're coloured. Um, they're a you know, dark skin colour, a dark red colour. Um, then there's um, another layer here, and, and this is really more to, um, if we have a look at the mask, you'll notice it better. It's... Um, you see I've just put a little bit of blush in her cheeks and a little bit of colour in her lips as well there. Um, now the next few adjustment layers, the, the, this one here initially, um, this is one that I will pretty much do on all skin tones and I'll come into the red channel, I boost the reds in the shadows and I pull the blues out of the shadows so they, they get a little bit more yellow and because, as I was saying, skin shadows are not black. Um, and then there was a, a hue and saturation layer here. This was aimed squarely at the legs, um, and just because areas in shadow have less saturation and they were looking a bit oversaturated. And the rest of these layers are just fine-tuning layers that I've done later in the piece and um, just made it blend a little bit better. It might just be a little bit like you know, tweaking the saturation in some areas or... Um, pulling the mid-tones down and things like that. So just just tweak it and, until it kind of looks right, basically. And they tend to get done later once I've actually got the background in. Um, the lips, again, I just a little bit of tweaking on the lips, just a little bit of colour. Um, and um, if I go in here and have a look here... Okay, and just brightening that shadow there in that one as well. Um, so then we got to the undershirt. Now, this was actually a bit of a key element for me. This and the hat, to me, had slightly nautical elements to them, particularly if I went with the blues, um, which really fed into the idea of having a nautical kind of background as well. And again, this is just two different layers, one set to colour, one set to soft light, um, and the masking as well. The shoes, again, same sort of thing. I do note um, <clears throat> as the light falls off, you lead, need less saturation. So these colours were always going to be a little bit less saturated than the dress and the undershirt. And there is just a little bit of variation in the colour on this one to give them a little bit of depth as well. So then came the big one of, sorry about that, colouring the background of the, or colouring the dress. So um, and I started out with um, the main blue background of the dress and that was using a colour selection. So if we have a look at the mask there, I'd selected all the blue areas and then I did later go in and mask out the areas where I, I didn't want it affected or I did want it affected um, by hand. And again, that's just a colour layer and a soft light layer. 
and then I started adding in some details so um, if we have a look here these are all just hand painted details so having a look at the layer I've just gone in and painted those in and then the same with the flowers now the flowers that's the um, the main kind of pink layer the mask for that which is these colors here and then I just went in and, and created like individual spots here and again we've got a, a color layer and a soft light layer and I just wanted a, a, a little bit more variation in color to it so I added in the, um, the cyan as well and again that's just hand painted in pretty much um, so then to the eyes again this was just a color layer note that in the highlights I masked out that little white highlight so that wasn't blue as well and then I have a for whites of eyes I tend to have a, a layer set to soft light and use a soft white brush at a lower opacity and then I just pulled that back a bit and that just gives a little tweak of brightening there as well um, now the hair now that the one tricky thing with the hair um, there's a couple of different layers so I've got my base color for the hair um, which was a um, again a color layer and a soft light layer and then I wanted the highlights to be a little bit richer so I added richer tones here again set to color and soft light but this time at 50% opacity but the difference with these ones when you double click on the layer um, and if I can get this to come back here yeah um, and you can alt or option click and drag these sliders and it will affect how much it's seen from underneath so if you can just kind of imagine you can slide them whole but then if you hold down the alt or option and slide half of it it gives you a, a more gradual kind of transition um, and again hair masking off hair G hair is always fun to play with masks but um, again the hat this time I used two slightly different colors I just wanted a slightly richer tone once I'd kind of got it in there and then I needed to add a shadow where the plait would, cre would create a shadow on the dress so that was just a curves adjustment layer there so at this point it's looking a little bit odd without its background so um, I'll just take it back to here and we'll just start having a quick look through the background um, so I had an existing image of a peer that I, I wanted to use general edits just cleaning up like you would with any other image Later on I found that I needed to change the color. It looks atrocious at the moment, but it does get better believe me um, And because I was changing the direction of light with the lamp I flipped the railing and uh, put that on the other side and then of course I had to fill in any little edits there as well more tweaking on the floor new sky coming in and then darkening down the sky as I need to um, and just the, the layer mask on the sky by the way is just sort of masking out things like that um, and then a color layer so that was a gradient fill just to tweak the color adding in the bird and then there's a couple of curves adjustment layers for darkness um, and here's where I've painted in the light so you can see here the areas where I've painted in the pools of light and on the darkness layers I needed to highlight the edges here so if you have a look at the mask the front of the bird the little edges of the lamp post and the edges of the the pier I've just masked those out just a, just a little bit just to create a bit more direction to the light um, then there's the stars layer one is a, a noise layer that's been I've used threshold to bring back down to look more like stars and then a brush layer as well I used apply image and um, applied the clouds layer to the mask to get a relatively accurate mask and then you know tweaked it and painted it in a little bit as well and then the shadow as well which to be honest still needs a little bit of tweaking um, okay so then we so you will start to see now how these two layers start to make her look a little bit better there as well and if I scroll back up here we can start to see what's happening with the flowers now the flowers were just 
pieces of the skirt that I'd copied um, and initially I had created different layers here um, and I'll just turn this one off here um, and if we zoom in a little bit you'll see I just created one and then I clone stamped it to create multiple variations and then each individual one I used um, free transform and distort to rotate them and resize them and just give them a little bit of variation. Um, so there was the daisies from the skirt, the roses from the skirt, a few different layers there. Um, but in the end, whilst I was relatively happy with it, I felt it was a little bit too large for the image. So what I ended up doing was um, merging all the layers into another layer and scaling it and I did give it a tiny bit of warp to give the flow a little bit of shape around here and then I did end up adding a little bit of blue colouring just to blend it a little bit better so that's just a well that's not even set to zero that's supposed to have about 20% on it. Um, now the, the daisies on the hat that's just again those little cutouts and then they've got curved adjustment layers shadows again those curves adjustment layers um, bringing up the reds and bringing out the yellows as well so that they're not a true black because they're going on to brown and red here. Um, now because um, I then went on to light the lamp so that's um, a few different layers there there's the main layer which is just a, a solid layer which I've just masked out so um, it was just a, a not quite hard brush and then I just masked out the top part of the lamp and then there's a glow layer here set to linear dodge at 20% and another glow layer here set to screen at 20%. Um, now that I had that I realised there would be a rim light on her so I created a rim light by um, copying the edges of the mask and then blurring them, inverting them and blurring them. So this was a broad one and this one was a little bit narrower. There were a few others and then I had to paint in a few details like other edges of the skirt and the edge of her hand where it would have caught as well. And then from there I masked it back to the main mask of the girl and then had to erase details like the front side of the plaits and any areas that wouldn't catch the rim light. So that was kind of that. And then a gradual fall off so I had a mask with a gradient fill on that. <clears throat> Um, and then adding the lantern, so that one was you know, pretty much the same as the other, but I had to make sure that I had an effect on the dress as well. So there's a few different layers there that um, affect the dress, and they're set to overlay mode and screen mode as well. Um, so from there, we're just about at the end. We're almost finished. Um, I do a merge all to a new layer and set that to soft light at 20% just to give it a little bit of a contrast boost and then I merged a lot of that and sharpen. Um, I hope this has helped you, I hope you've enjoyed it um, and thanks very much for watching and listening. Bye!